Madhavan Nair, former ISRO chief, is with us live. Mr. Nair, uh, great privilege to have you, sir, on a momentous day for ISRO. Your sentiments, your thoughts as ISRO's first solar mission is all set to blast off very shortly, Mr. Nair. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me an opportunity. Uh, first of all, let me wish all success to the team ISRO for the event which is take place within a few hours from now. Uh, certainly, this is a much-awaited uh, mission, and we are looking towards the sun and trying to decipher several mysteries surrounding that. Uh, the previous commentators have made such observation from the ground because of the obstruction of the atmosphere and uh, other uh, At the same time, if you go to space, we will get a clear visible. Of course, the lower orbit provides an opportunity, but at the same time, uh, it will be only for short periods. It will be uh, obstructed by eclipses uh, from. So, to avoid this, we so have selected the Lagrangian point. Uh, there is uh, practically no interference from the and also a continuous observation of the solar system is possible. A few instruments are meant for monitoring the local ambient conditions of radiation, uh, charged particles, magnetic field and all those things in the spacecraft, whereas the four of them are meant to study uh, in depth uh, the phenomena which takes place on the sun. As you know, it is a fusion reaction which is taking place continuously there. And also the, the heating of the corona is uh, something which is not fully understood. Solar storms uh, uh, occur uh, frequently and mm. that affects the ground-based communication system as well as our spacecraft as well. To get an understanding of all these things and also to issue a early warning to the spacecraft about the eminent a solar storm and the particle uh, radiation, etc., is going to be of immense help. Yeah, uh, it will throw yeah. a lot of light into the fundamental ideas uh, uh, about the solar, the sun, and air coupling, which yes. is very much essential to understand the weather and the climate phenomena on the ground. Uh, Mr. Nair, you know, one of the things that has become a huge talking point when talking about Aditya L1 and before this Chandrayaan, is the amazing cost effectiveness with which ISRO is being able to execute these world-class missions, including Aditya L1, which uh, we are told costs about, uh, you know, somewhere below $50 million, which is far less than comparable missions that have been conducted by other countries. You have headed ISRO, sir. How do you explain this? Uh, well, I think it's the systematic planning of the flow which helps this thing. Uh, we do not uh, create infrastructure or technology for specifically for one mission alone. Uh, the technology which has developed in the past and built uh, consistently uh, over time is made use of. The, uh, the PSLV XL, uh, this is the same launch vehicle we are used in the Chandrayaan 1 mission. So the vehicle development cost is not there. We had to only provide for the hardware which is to be used in this. Similarly, the spacecraft has got a lot of uh, elements which are derived from the Chandrayaan spacecraft, and uh, the sensors are developed by our laboratory here in Bangalore and in Pune uh, and in Rwanda. So these uh, uh, the in-house development of these uh, sensors and technology uh, definitely are very, very cost-effective. As I mentioned earlier, the, the average cost of a ISO scientist or technician is hardly one fifth of that of the developed countries. That also is another factor. But more I would attribute to the careful planning and systematic growth plan which ISRO has adopted in the past. Yes. Sneha, you have a question for yes, Mr. Nair? Yeah. I do. I do. In fact, I want to ask you, sir, how difficult has it been in the past to get funding for ISRO? Because there has been a lot of chatter about this, at least in the political circles, about the difference in attitude vis-a-vis -vis the financial aid or the funding that uh, the, 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 the ISRO essentially gets. So uh, what do you have to say, given that you've served uh, as the chief of ISRO, sir? Uh, well, as you know, ISRO is... Uh... A very lean organization, and more than that, it has got a, a tenure profile by which it concentrates on technology development. These technologies are uh, capitalized 
for the benefit of the common man. In fact, uh, 95 percent of the budget of the ISRO is spent on providing services to the agriculture sector, fisheries, the forestry, the planning commission, uh, the disaster uh, management agency, and uh, above all, the communication connectivity throughout the country and so on. So that uh, the bulk of the funding is used for societal application. Hardly hmm. five percent of the budget is being spent for the scientific missions. And uh, this again is a unique example, which other developing countries or the, the countries we are in the process of uh, achieving a global status can follow. Uh, Mr. Nair, apologies, sir. There was a bit of an audio glitch when you were speaking. Uh, to my last question about budgetary support and interest from governments, UPA to Modi, you had talked about it yesterday. What can you share with us, sir? Well, uh, one thing, uh, I was the chairman of the Space Research Organization during mm. the UPA-1 regime. And Dr. Mangmohanji has given a fantastic support, both financially and uh, providing the guidance and oversight. And political support was uh, unsuited. And yes. that way we were able to climb great heights during the UPA-1 time. But uh, for various reasons, UPA-2 time, the growth was not uh, that uh, substantial. And uh, perhaps uh, there was a small... Uh, setback also in several areas. Uh, but after Moriji took over, he took a very personal interest in seeing that the space technology is uh, put to use for the development of the country. I still recall his uh, first Independent Day speech from Red Fort. He has uh, spent a few minutes highlighting how space can benefit the society. Mm -hmm. And he, soon he followed up with the uh, meeting of Secretary and with the Space Department to implement the space application for the national level. To go back in history, uh, after Chandrayaan time, I, uh, Chandrayaan one time, I met Modi Ji at Gujarat. And after then, uh, space technology and applications were abandoned. And he very keenly listened to me, and he has given immediate command to see that the space application program in the state is uh, given full trust. Yeah. And within a month or so, uh, we have developed a teleconference facility and also the monitoring for agriculture and so on in Gujarat. In fact, he has followed the same spirit after he became PM also. Not only that he is giving full encouragement, but he is also given new initiatives like the Gaganyan program, uh, which will put us in the forefront of space faring nation. So that way the, uh, the present government is fully supportive and the leadership provided by Dr. Somnath in terms of aiding the teams, the so team. So team remains the same, and yeah. they are very highly qualified, committed, and hardworking, and they make a lot of personal sacrifices to achieve the mission goals. In fact, that team, along with the leadership, is uh, certainly something which we can all be proud of. Very, very true, and thank you for your, for your words, uh, and uh, I'm sure the entire ISRO community is also listening to stalwarts like yourselves, and your blessings always matter, especially to young scientists who are out there, uh, you know, being very much a part of this amazing mission. M Mr. G. Madhavan Nair, thank you very much for speaking to India today.